across the street over here is McManus Hall. I can hardly believe that it was 58 years ago that I descended into the musty basement of that hall for my first ROTC class. Makes me feel like a dinosaur today. <laughs> but I'm very happy to acknowledge some of the ways in which the military program here at, at Wheaton, the training program, uh, impacted my life as well as a bit of active duty uh, later on. Like all the other male freshmen in 1954, we all went to ROTC classes twice a week. And any kind of a program that is uh, mandatory uh, evokes a certain amount of grumbling. <laughs> Especially those 7.15 in the morning drill sessions out on Chase Street there with how many were there? We must have, must have been about 400 guys out there at least. Uh, and uh, they were too early for me. But in those classes, I remember uh, learning uh, about military history in a way that I'd never known before. I knew a little bit about the wars in the United States. But we had a chance to study some of the ways in which, which our forebears uh, fought, strategized, and their courage and their skill and their willingness to sacrifice uh, came through in a very powerful way to me. It was a surprise and a very pleasant one. I wasn't enough of an athlete here at Wheaton to, to make one of the sports uh, teams, but in these, uh, these weekly drills, we had to, to perform uh, and, and we had to march and learn to work together and in the process, uh, in a spree to co-develop and uh, it, was a, it was a very uh, <coughs> kind of revealing experience for me. Now I must say, if you're in a platoon and the leader says, now I'm right, and you go left. <laughs> it's not the platoon that will be embarrassed. <laughs> anyway, we tried very hard not to be the guy that went left when everybody else was going right. But uh, after a couple of years in the mandatory program, uh, I decided to, to go on with the uh, advanced ROTC program. I was grateful for a, a bit of a tuition break that it offered. But also, the really the major reason that I, that I went into advanced ROTC was because I wanted to serve our country. And I'm old enough to remember what it was like living during the Second World War, when we had victory gardens and rationing, and uh, when we saw gold stars hanging in the windows of families that had lost a son, and when we had Memorial Day celebrations in the cemeteries that were far more serious than church on Sunday. It was a very, a very uh, intense uh, the time of, of life for, I think, all Americans. And we wanted to do everything we could to help uh, end the war and that we, uh, uh, allied nations were all involved in, in Europe and, and in Asia. So uh, having this opportunity uh, was, was a wonderful one for me. When my senior year here, uh, we had two battalions in the regiment and I was uh, uh, the commander of the one, of one battalion. And I did my best to get that battalion in shape so that they weren't messing up when we were uh, advanced in, you know. But I realized also, a bit intuitively then, that it wasn't just the mission that was important, those men were also important. When I got to Fort Benning, Georgia for the infantry officer school, I, I had drilled into me the fact that every, every officer has, has a double responsibility, the accomplishment of the mission and the welfare of the men in those days. Uh, and those two principles, those two twin values, uh, have served me so well all the rest of my life. Uh, I've been in, involved in, in uh, academic administration, and I tend to be a task-oriented guy, but 
those those lessons and and that uh, kind of a of a value that was pounded into you. Don't forget the welfare of your people. It has been a huge huge help to me over the years. Just the simple fact that when we were in the field and it was time to eat, everybody wanted to eat. Who ate last? The officers. The men went first. If there wasn't any food left over, tough for the officers. But that really made a deep impression on me, those values. And I've said to many people over the years, the best management training I ever received was at Fort Benning, Georgia, and in the ROTC program of Wheaton College. Sometimes what you dislike the most turns out to be of tremendous value. Now I thought the military really had an obsession with personal appearance. <laughs> Spit shine shoes, polished brass, straight gig lines. I didn't even know what a gig line was before I uh, got into the military. Weekly haircuts. But you know, I later came to understand that if, a, if, a, if an officer doesn't respect himself or herself, the men or the women or the and soldiers won't either. And uh, it, it was a very important lesson that I learned. And as I look back and think back on it, I realized there was no sloppiness permitted in the Wheaton ROTC program or in the military that I knew at that time. There was another kind of obsession I thought uh, the military had, and that was physical fitness. Uh, you know, I, I mean, these guys, five mile runs, 45 minutes with your boots on. Hey, you know, that's nine minute miles with your boots on? Come on, everybody couldn't do that. But uh, somehow I think it got into my system because uh, today I, I have a routine of, of running three miles on one Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, been riding 10 miles on my bike on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and it's the best health insurance I've ever had. <laughs> and I know that the, the, the military had something to do with that. When I graduated uh, and was commissioned in 1958, uh, I received a, an, an award here at the college. Uh, and, and to symbolize that, uh, I was given three books uh, written by uh, uh, S.L.A. Marshall, who was a, a military author, one of the books was on World War II and the other two on Korea. Uh, and each one of these books was autographed by President Edmund, D. Raymond Edmund. Incidentally, Dr. Edmund served in the First World War, and he was in the First Division out at Fort Riley, Kansas. And when we did our mandatory summer camp between our junior and senior years, Dr. Edmund was the only college president that came to Fort Riley to see the, the, the students, the cadets that were there. He was an amazing man. Well, he had autographed each one of these books, and under each, each uh, his name in each book was a verse of scripture. And it was a different verse in each one of the books. I'd like to tell you what those three were. In the first one, he had written, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. In the second, Suffer hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And in the third, he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus Christ. ROTC was more than patriotism for Dr. Edmund, and I don't know anybody that was more patriotic than he. It was about living a life that pleased God as well. And the moral and spiritual values for which Wheaton stands were not omitted in the ROTC program. I suspect from what I've heard this afternoon that that's still true. So I'm very grateful to express my thanks publicly for the distinctive ways that Wheaton ROTC helped shape my life and work, as well as giving me a chance to serve our country. And I hope and pray that this tradition of solid leadership development, nourished by Christian ethical values, characterized the ROTC program almost 60 years ago will continue to mark Wheaton ROTC for many years to come. Thank you.